lecture, uh, I would like to start uh, um, describing some particular example of uh, um, the use of statistical mechanics. I remind you that the density of uh, general recipe is that uh, we have an Hamiltonian which is a function of the coordinates then uh, we build a partition function we want to compute the properties of the system at a certain uh, temperature t which is the inverse of beta and this is the sum of an x of e to the minus beta respect to the value of x uh, sorry, e of x at the energy and then uh, uh, from this uh, we get uh, the free energy let's say the free energy per particle is minus 1 over theta times the limit we compute it in the thermal analysis limit of uh, uh, the logarithm of z of theta and then uh, uh, this gives us uh, a, a thermodynamic description of the system and um, at a temperature t, uh, which is 1 over beta. And this is the recipe. And then uh, what we are going to do now is to study, uh, use this recipe for discussing uh, a few examples that, uh, uh, that are interesting. One is uh, the easy model. And the easy model is a uh, workhorse of uh, statistical mechanics because uh, it, um, it is the simplest, simplest model uh, which shows uh, a very rich uh, statistical behavior. Okay, so, uh, so in the easy model, the configurations are uh, um, configurations of uh, spins. <laughs> So x i take value plus or minus one. So we think of a, a magnetic system. There are atoms, uh, and each atom uh, um, interacts. Uh, uh, each atom has a magnetic moment uh, that can either point up or down. Up is plus one, minus is uh, uh, down. Minus one. Is down. And um, okay, so then uh, the. Uh, the energy of the Hamiltonian of the system is given by generally two terms. One is uh, uh, um, is, uh, is the effect of an uh, external magnetic field, and this external mag magnetic field uh, will tend to orient uh, uh, spins uh, in the same direction of the field uh, because. Uh, so this favors, uh, um, so the, the energy is lower, so the probability is higher for configurations where the xi are, have the same sign of h. And then uh, there is an exchange interaction, which is uh, generally written uh, in this way. Where um, essentially this sum runs all over all the pairs of uh, spins that are interacting. So in a, a real physical system, you have uh, these atoms that sit on a, a regular lattice, and uh, each atom, uh, each magnetic moment uh, interacts uh, with the neighbor uh, only with the neighbors. Okay, so there is a finite range of interaction. So essentially, the way to describe this is that, uh, say, you have uh, atoms uh, that sit on a regular lattice, and each atom i can only interact with atom j, uh, which uh, which are nearest neighbors. Okay, and um, um, so, however, this. Uh, 
makes um, the description of uh, the analysis of this system a little bit complicated, so we are going to use uh, to study uh, the mean field uh, version of this model. What does mean field mean? It means that, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, I'm going to replace this sum as a sum over all possible pairs, uh, all i and j. But uh, I'm going to take that the total uh, interaction of one single spin with all the others uh, is finite. Okay? Uh, here it is finite because the number of spins with, uh, with which uh, spin i interacts is finite. And uh, in order, if I change this sum uh, as a sum over all pairs i less than j, then uh, I have to divide by the number of spins in order to, uh, to have uh, um, that each uh, spin interacts, uh, the interaction of all the other spins with one particular spin is fine. Okay, so this is the mean field uh, is in model, and then uh, what we are going to do is to do this uh, uh, to do this uh, recipe. Okay, so very good. So let's start. So the the the, the main uh, uh, insight to start uh, discuss. So we have to uh, compute the partition function. So the main insight is that uh, the sum over i and j of xi xj can actually be written as uh, the sum uh, as one half over the sum of i and j of xi xj minus because uh, say in this sum uh, there are all pairs i and j so uh, here there are only pairs where i is less than j strictly less than j, so there is uh, uh, this sum counts, counts twice the same pair. But then in addition, in this sum, there are also diagonal terms where i is equal to j. So I should remove from this sum one half, sum over i from 1 to n of xi squared. But xi squared is equal to 1. So this is uh, uh, one half sum over i and j of xi xj minus n over t. Now, uh, in addition, uh, when you notice that uh, the sum over i and j of xi xj is nothing but one half the sum over i of xi. Uh, squared. So uh, we can uh, rewrite this Hamiltonian by, in a simpler form, by uh, just having j divided by 2n sour i of xi squared minus nj over 2. Okay, so this uh, simplifies things a, a lot. So this is just a constant, so it's not going to make any difference, uh, it's not going to have any effect, uh, it's just going to change, uh, uh, shift the energy uh, levels by, uh, by a constant. So I'm going to uh, neglect this constant. Okay, I, I'm going to study this model, okay, which is essentially the mean field uh, is in model. Okay, very good. So um, now, uh, if you want to compute the partition function, then this is uh, just given by this formula. Now, uh, what you can observe is that uh, this uh, object here, let's call it M, takes uh, all integer values uh, between, uh, uh, so this can be equal to uh, minus n, minus n uh, um, uh, plus 2, minus n plus 4, up to 
two or three is zero, and uh, well, it depends on whether n is up to uh, n minus two and n. Okay. So it takes uh, uh, n plus one uh, values, and these values uh, uh, go from minus n to n. Okay. So essentially, we can uh, uh, write. Uh, this partition function by just summing over all possible values of m they go from minus n to n in steps of 2 um, of uh, the number of configuration which have a certain value of n of m which is n choose n plus m over 2 times uh, the energy for a given value of n e to the minus beta times the energy, which is e to the beta times h times m minus uh, uh, plus beta j over 2 n times m squared. Okay, so this is the partition function of the mean field this model. And now, uh, well, uh, um, of course, uh, uh, say you see this. Um, um, uh, so the, here you have uh, this uh, binomial coefficient, uh, and uh, we have seen uh, uh, many times that uh, the binomial coefficient uh, uh, is uh, uh, is the number of samples which have. Uh, um, uh, k, uh, a fraction of k over n of plus. So this can be written as e uh, to the n times uh, the entropy of uh, uh, a bit, uh, say, uh, uh, a binary value with probability k, of k divided by n. Okay? So this is uh, uh, just minus k divided by n log k divided by n. Um, minus 1 minus k divided by n log 1 minus k divided by n. And so I'm going to use this uh, and, uh, and also I'm going to turn this sum into an integral uh, over uh, m which is uh, just m divided by n. Okay, So the integral well, m is going to go from minus 1 to 1 and then uh, uh, this term here is going to be uh, e to the n times uh, the entropy of this uh, uh, of this standard value which is uh, minus 1 plus m over 2 log 1 plus m over 2 minus 1 minus m over 2 log 1 minus m over 2. So this is uh, just uh, this uh, factor here, apart from uh, subleading terms. And then I have uh, uh, this term here, which is just beta h times small m. Uh, plus beta h times small m and then uh, I have plus beta j over 2 times m squared ok so now you see that uh, well, this is uh, an integral that can be performed uh, uh, using uh, saddle point so I'm going to write this uh, as uh, uh, e to the minus, so as, as the integral, and then minus 1 and 1 and dm of e to the minus n times beta times f. And f will depend on uh, beta, m, and uh, h, and all the other terms. So, but so if I write it in this form, 
you see that uh, this f uh, is going to, if I compute it at the standard point, is going to give me exactly the uh, free energy. Okay? So, very good. So, uh, let us, uh, so, uh, let us see what is this uh, free energy here. So, this, uh, um, right, let's skip it. So, this, uh, this free energy F of, uh, uh, well, let me call it uh, F tilde because then the free energy will be equal to the, the one that I compute at the subtle point. F of uh, uh, beta M. Uh, H, well, uh, H, and also it depends on J, but it's going to is equal to uh, 1 plus M over 2 log 1 plus M over 2 minus plus 1 minus M over 2 log 1 minus M over 2 minus, uh, because I'm taking a minus sign, and also uh, this uh, should be divided by beta, should be 1 over beta, here, minus uh, uh, hm minus j over 2 times m squared, okay? Very good. So this is my uh, function, uh, my free energy. And uh, okay, so let's uh, um, and uh, uh, my um, the free energy of my. So this integral here is going to be equal to uh, the e to the minus n uh, times this beta of f tilde computed uh, in the in the saddle point value in the value of m uh, that makes this f uh, minimal okay okay uh, very good so so this uh, result is going to be uh, is f tilde, so the free energy in this case is going to be f tilde of this value m star. Okay, let's compute uh, what m star should be. Okay, f star is given by uh, the minima of this function. So I should take a, uh, let's take a first order derivative of this function with respect to beta, uh, with respect to m, sorry. So here I have 1 over beta, then uh, when I take the derivative with respect to this, I get uh, 1 half log 1 plus m over 2. When I take the derivative of the with respect to the area, minus one half log one minus m of two. If I combine these two, I get uh, log, I get one half log one plus m divided by one minus m. Then uh, if I take the derivative with respect to this, I get just one, uh, I ju just get uh, uh, one over one plus m that cancel with this gives me one half. Huh? If I take the derivative here and get minus one over one minus m that cancel with this and give me minus one half. Huh? And then I have minus h minus j times m. I should set this equal to zero. Okay, so this one half, one half cancel. And also, um, uh, you may remember that one half log one plus m divided one minus m is the arc hyperbolic tangent of 
and okay. So uh, so this means that uh, I can write this equation for uh, m star if I multiply by beta here take this on the other side, multiply by beta and take the tangent so the, uh, the equation that uh, I have as a result of this uh, is that uh, my m star should satisfy the equation the hyperbolic tangent of beta h plus beta j times m uh, m star should be hyperbolic tangent of beta h plus beta j m star. Now this uh, uh, <coughs> uh, 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 physical interpretation, if you want, uh, so we said, uh, uh, so uh, if you look at uh, spin i, we say the, uh, this m star if you think about it, uh, uh, the way we define it uh, is n is 1 over n times uh, m, which was 1 over n times sum over i from 1 to n of this xi. So this m is nothing but uh, the magnetization per spin. It's the uh, average so is the magnetization for one spin. So, so this tells you that uh, uh, the magnetization of one spin is, uh, uh, is given by the hyperbolic tangent of uh, the field that is acting on it plus uh, a term that depends uh, on the interaction within between the neighbors. So, and these neighbors. Uh, what, what the neighbors uh, do act uh, is they act uh, as an effective field uh, that adds up to the external field. Okay, so you, you can um, so the simpler uh, the simplest case you can deal with uh, is the is just uh, the case uh, where j is equal to zero. This is a model for just a, a paramagnet. Uh, and then uh, you would just have this, uh, 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 you would just have that m star is equal to the hyperbolic tangent of beta h. Okay, so for uh, j equal to zero, then, then uh, uh, you, I mean, this is the, just the Curie um, law of uh, magnetism. But if you have interaction with also neighboring spins, then you also have this. Uh, effective field that is caused by the neighbors. Okay? Now this is, uh, 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 this is nice. So, um, now let's uh, analyze uh, this uh, equation. So, uh, let me uh, rewrite it uh, here. The subtle point value of the magnetization is given by this equation here, which, as you see, is an implicit equation for m star. So let's try to uh, solve this uh, equation uh, uh, graphically. So uh, let me plot, uh, say, the left-hand side, which is just uh, uh, a straight line, okay? And then uh, let me plot uh, the right-hand side of this equation as a function of m. Let's say that h is zero, so this uh, uh, curve, uh, and let's start by looking at the case where beta g is less than 1. So this will be a curve that goes from, uh, say, minus 1 to plus 1, which uh, uh, goes uh, more or less like this. Okay, so 
so we'll approach one for x uh, for m going to a classic action, sorry. And um, let me draw it for generic value of h. So for generic value of h it will be something like this. Where uh, the point, uh, uh, this point uh, where uh, uh, the so this, this curve here is the tangent hyperbolic of beta h plus beta j times m. And, uh, and this point here, uh, this curve here is just curve m. Okay? So the intersection between these two curves uh, gives me the value of m star. Okay, now uh, we should understand how this uh, m star depends on h, for example. Okay. Now you see that uh, um, so this point here where the hyperbolic tangent is zero is when uh, this is zero. So this corresponds to m, which is uh, uh, equal to minus h divided by j. So when h is uh, large, we are uh, uh, on this side. So uh, when h is large, then this curve is shifted to the left. So it's uh, like, uh, like this. And then uh, you get that the intersection will be very close to 1. Okay? Whereas uh, when uh, uh, h is equal to 0, then this curve uh, passes exactly through 0. So uh, when m is equal to 0, and uh, so when, a, when, a, uh, when uh, h is negative, so the intersection will be on the negative side. So as a result of this, uh, when uh, uh, beta j is less than 1, beta j is the slope of this curve uh, uh, when it intersects uh, the origin, when, when it intersects the x-axis. So, uh, as a result of this, as a function of h, if you find, if you look at uh, what is this m star, uh, you will get uh, uh, a curve that more or less uh, looks, like, uh, looks like this. Okay, um, which is not exactly equal to the hyperbolic tangent, it's a little bit different, but uh, um, say um, has the same general feature. Okay, now let us see uh, on this same graph uh, what happens. Uh, actually, let me draw it again. What happens uh, when instead beta j is larger than 1? Then uh, we get uh, uh, again, uh, uh, this is the curve m. But when I draw, I draw this curve, uh, what I have uh, is that uh, the, this curve uh, has, a, um, has a slope uh, when it touches uh, the origin, uh, which, is, uh, which is larger than 1. Okay, so let's take uh, a very large and positive uh, H. So that uh, you would have something like this. Oh, okay. So let's do it like this. Okay. Very good. So uh, again, uh, for m, uh, for h, uh, which is uh, large uh, and uh, negative, uh, your uh, intersection m star will be very close to one. Okay. So again. Uh, 
you expect that your curve will be very close to 1 when h is large. But now when you uh, decrease h, you see that uh, uh, at some point uh, you will start uh, having uh, uh, three solutions to this equation. One is this, one is this, and one is this. Okay? So there are three solutions to this equation. So, uh, and, uh, and so again, uh, when uh, h is equal to zero, then uh, uh, one of these solutions will be equal to zero. And the other one, uh, the other two will be uh, symmetric with respect to um, h and uh, minus h, okay? Uh, with respect to zero. So, so when you get to zero, you will get uh, three solutions. One is this, uh, one is this, and one is uh, this. So generically, uh, the curve that you uh, that you will see is a curve like this. Then at certain point you start having uh, the appearance of another two solutions. So um, so the curve that you have uh, is something like this. Okay. Now uh, well. Uh, now that we have uh, more than one solution in this uh, in this range, then uh, um, we should figure out which is the correct uh, solution. And the correct solution is the one for which uh, the free energy is minimal. Okay, so let's uh, uh, look at uh, what is. Uh, this uh, free energy. So the free energy is composed uh, of uh, two parts. So one is one over beta times. Uh, uh, so the, uh, we can take beta equal to one if you want. So one is this part here, which is minus the entropy. Also, okay. So I want to plot is f tilde as a function of m. And uh, m goes from uh, uh, minus 1 to 1. Okay. So there is one part uh, which is minus the entropy, and the entropy is a curve uh, like this. Uh, this, is, this is minus the entropy of m, which is uh, this uh, first part here. And then on top of this, uh, the, there is minus, uh, th there is a parabola, okay? So this parabola is, uh, is a parabola that, uh, say, passes uh, uh, from zero. And uh, so let's first uh, look at the case where uh, <coughs> j is very small. So if j is very small, this parabola, parabola is very uh, broad, which means uh, that uh, uh, when you add this to this, uh, the, this uh, <coughs> the curve that, that you obtain is essentially a small modification of this curve, uh, where essentially the, uh, the minimum will be a little bit shifted from uh, um, uh, from the from the original one, okay, and um, and uh, yes, and, and so you will have uh, a curve more or less like this, okay. To, uh, one. So you see that uh, this is. Uh, 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 this is uh, so this uh, parabola when h is uh, um, uh, positive, then uh, the minimum of 
this parabola will be for uh, uh, negative values of m uh, Sorry, uh, so I have to add this uh, to this. Uh, so, so if you if you add uh, these two curves, uh, then uh, what you get is that the uh, the, uh, the minimum will be actually on the other side. Okay, so uh, the the deviation will be larger here. So it would be uh, something uh, which has a minimum on the negative, on the positive side, okay? And, uh, okay, so this, but this, uh, so this is consistent uh, with the fact that uh, you have only one minimum and uh, as you change h, uh, you will follow this curve. Uh, uh, from, uh, I mean, the, the result, there is only one minimum. Okay. But what happens uh, when instead uh, this uh, uh, beta j or j beta times j is larger than 1, then when beta times j you, you enter into this uh, 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 situation here where uh, the, this curve, this parabola is uh, uh, much uh, uh, more uh, as a much higher curvature. So uh, when uh, you um, you add this curve to this, uh, then uh, what happens now is that uh, this curve uh, will uh, uh, develop uh, a uh, sorry develop a maximum here, then uh, uh, a minimum here. but then uh, uh, another uh, minimum here and because on this side uh, this, this curve is larger than on this side this uh, uh, minimum here will be smaller than this one okay so what this tells you is that uh, so because this uh, uh, is for H positive so this is for H positive so the right solution will be the one where uh, uh, the m star has the same sign of h. So the right solution will be this one up to this point, then this one, and then uh, uh, so from, from this point, from h positive, it will jump to h negative, and then follow this curve. Okay? So, uh, then, uh, um, then uh, uh, so this this gives us uh, the the, uh, the the free energy, and you see, as you see, the uh, the behavior that uh, we find here is very similar uh, to the behavior that we have discussed uh, for the. Uh, Gartner and this uh, theorem, in the sense that, uh, say, uh, there we saw that uh, if you solve uh, the subdual point condition, then uh, you may find multiple solutions, but then in the end, uh, what really matters is only one solution, where which is obtained by these two solutions by this particular construction, where uh, the um, um, the two, uh, where you jump from one solution to the other in a discontinuous manner. And, um, okay, so, uh, now, uh, indeed, uh, what you can notice uh, is that uh, 
when uh, you write down this uh, partition function here this is similar uh, to uh, the partition so this this essentially is dominated uh, by this point uh, and this point so you can write it uh, as e to the minus beta uh, n times the, this free energy computed in the positive solution plus e to the minus beta n times the uh, free energy computed in the negative solution and uh, what we have seen is that when you have a situation like this uh, then uh, if you take the log and divide by 1 over n and take the limit as n goes to infinity then uh, uh, the, the free energy is going to be uh, going to jump from one solution to the other okay and this is essentially um, a very general uh, um, um, feature that underlies uh, what I call the first order phase transition when, when, you, when you jump from one state to the, uh, to the next so indeed uh, uh, so what we have seen so what we have seen is that uh, you can think uh, at uh, solutions like uh, uh, this one uh, on uh, a solution like this one as a solution where you have uh, the coexistence of uh, a, so when h is equal to zero uh, well these two uh, minima have the same height so you are in a situation where your free energy has essentially this uh, shape so these two minima have this exactly the same height so and um, and you can construct uh, a, a solution with any value of m inside this uh, interval here by taking a fraction uh, of spins uh, which have uh, this uh, uh, magnetization here and the rest uh, which is uh, and the rest which is uh, which has this other magnetization here so um, so uh, so in the sense that uh, say when, when you have uh, that uh, your uh, uh, you, you have a, a system that um, can be in uh, two different uh, states so that uh, so these two states are described by different uh, um, distributions then essentially your, your partition function uh, uh, is uh, a sum over all these uh, uh, possible phases uh, of uh, the partition function for this phase a temperature beta and as long as uh, you are in this situation where uh, the, um, the, um, the free energy of these states are the same then uh, uh, you can realize uh, a system with, uh, which is a mixture of uh, the different phases and, um, and this is essentially uh, uh, the physics of uh, first of the uh, phase transition and is essentially uh, <coughs> a system where you have uh, the coexistence in the same system of uh, regions of your system which are in different uh, uh, statistical states okay so uh, the other thing I want to mention about uh, this uh, particular situation where uh, you have uh, coexistence 
is that uh, um, this is consistent uh, with uh, Maxwell uh, construction. So I, rem I remind you what is Maxwell construction. So Maxwell construction is uh, so Maxwell uh, uh, was. Uh, 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 discussing the problem of uh, uh, Van der Waals equation for gases. Uh, this is uh, uh, and uh, uh, if you solve Van der Waals, the, the, the equation for, uh, for uh, the equation of state of uh, uh, Van der Waals, what you get is a uh, uh, dependence of the pressure and the volume, which looks like this. So this is uh, uh, this part is a very uh, physical part because uh, it tells you that when you expand your gas, the pressure increases. Typically, uh, yes. Typically, when you expand the gas, the pressure uh, should decrease. So this is an unstable phase. So this is a, a unphysical state. And what Maxwell uh, uh, suggested is that essentially the way you should interpret this, uh, this picture or this uh, equation of state is that this is okay up to a certain point and it describes uh, the liquid, then uh, uh, it is okay from a certain point onwards and it describes the gas. But uh, uh, in between you should replace this, uh, cur this uh, curve by just a straight line that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, connects the gas phase and the liquid phase and uh, the, uh, uh, the way in which you should ch uh, choose this horizontal line and this cut is by imposing that the area of this curve here and the area of this curve here should be the same, okay? And the idea of uh, Maxwell was uh, based on thermodynamics. He uh, was saying, well, this state here, this uh, thermodynamic state and this thermodynamic state, they uh, are uh, uh, equivalent uh, in some sense because uh, I can think uh, of a transformation where I bring my system from this state to this state along this line and then uh, uh, I bring it back along uh, this other line and uh, if the work done on this transformation is equal to zero uh, then uh, uh, I have not I, I don't have to spend any uh, energy at fixed temperature, this is at fixed temperature. Uh, then, uh, um, uh, and then these two states uh, are uh, the same. Okay? Now in terms of uh, uh, our description, this condition here means that these two states uh, are the, the states on this line which have uh, the same free energy. Okay, so if you want to, um, um, so in this case, the, the work is uh, is given by uh, PdV. So the the work is always a uh, uh, force times uh, displacement. Okay, and uh, so in this case uh, the force is the pressure and the displacement is, is dV. So and, uh, if you integrate uh, uh, the pressure over dV, then uh, uh, this is what you get. Okay, now I want to show you that uh, the same construction is what makes you uh, go from the green curve here to the uh, violet curve. Huh? And so in order to do this, uh, well, we should uh, tilt uh, this figure here because essentially H in the magnetic system is the force and, um, and M is the, 
displacement is uh, how much the observable of uh, your system has changed. So you should uh, uh, look at this picture on the other uh, side. And uh, so in our case, the work should be the integral on a cycle that goes uh, along uh, this line here and then along uh, this line here. Okay, so uh, the work done uh, would be the sum of these two areas with a sign which is uh, given by the uh, sign of H. So it should be the integral in dm from this point to this point of H of m, but computed in, uh, in m star. Okay? And um, now this, uh, uh, so the, the, this condition that uh, these two areas are the same is exactly the condition that uh, uh, the free energy of uh, this solution and the free energy of this solution are, uh, are the same. Okay, so Essentially, this uh, um, uh, this 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 construction here is essentially equivalent uh, to Maxwell construction. Okay, now uh, there are uh, several things uh, that uh, you can uh, you can do. So uh, to study this. Uh, um, easy model and in particular uh, one interesting thing is to uh, study precisely what happens uh, uh, in uh, uh, when uh, uh, when you go from the situation where beta j is uh, less than 1 to the situation where beta j is uh, larger than 1 so I remind you that uh, uh, if you plot uh, m star as a function of h, then uh, uh, you, you get uh, this line, a continuous line, when uh, this beta j is, large, is less than 1, whereas uh, you get uh, uh, this uh, behavior when uh, uh, beta j is uh, uh, larger than one. Okay. Now, uh, <coughs> so now if we look at uh, the situation uh, at h equal to zero, then you see that for all beta which are less than uh, beta j which are less than one then uh, you have uh, that uh, the magnetization is equal to zero but uh, when uh, beta j is larger than one the uh, magnetization can be either plus one or uh, either positive or negative so this is another example of uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking and this of course because uh, the transition that takes place at when beta j is equal to one is a second order uh, uh, phase transition. So if you now plot the, uh, if you take h, which is equal to zero, and then uh, uh, plot as a function of one over, say, beta j, which would be like the temperature, and you plot uh, the value of the magnetization m star, then uh, uh, up to uh, this point uh, uh, up to this point uh, which is equal to 1 when uh, a beta j is equal to, uh, this is all the high temperature phase then magnetization is 0 but when the magnetization is less than 0 then uh, you have either a negative magnetization or a positive magnetization okay and uh, so this
this is uh, uh, so this is uh, so this is interesting. So you would like to understand uh, what is uh, going on uh, at this point, uh, and at this point uh, you have a uh, singularity because you go from uh, one type of behavior to another type of behavior, and um, but you are, well, this is a. Uh, uh, um, uh, a second order phase transition because uh, if you look uh, at uh, the behavior of the free energy across this phase transition then what you will find is that uh, the first uh, derivative of the free energy which are uh, the entropy of the energy are essentially constant and uh, whereas uh, uh, what, um, what has a, a discontinuity or a singularity is a second order, uh, is a second order uh, derivatives. Okay? So in particular you see for example also M, M star itself is a first order derivative of the uh, free energy with respect to the external field. And as you can see, it is uh, continuous, but its derivative, uh, you can see that uh, it is uh, actually discontinuous. Okay? And uh, so, for example, uh, one uh, way to see this uh, um, singular behavior is to look at the, what is called the susceptibility. So the susceptibility is uh, the derivative of the magnetization with respect to the conjugate variable, which is uh, the magnetic field. Okay, so if uh, if you take this equation and take a derivative with respect to h, what you get is that uh, d m star times d h is equal to the derivative of uh, the hyperbolic tangent, which is 1 minus the hyperbolic tangent square. When I compute it here, this is just m star square. And then uh, I have to put the derivative of what is inside with respect to h. And so this is uh, beta plus uh, uh, beta j uh, times the derivative of m star with respect to uh, h. Okay? Now if I take uh, this on the other side, then uh, I get that this is 1 minus m star square times beta divided by 1 minus uh, uh, beta j times 1 minus m star square. Okay? So this is uh, the susceptibility. And uh, you can see that this uh, susceptibility uh, one minus beta j <coughs> so the susceptibility when uh, when you are uh, in this region here, then M star is equal to zero, and the susceptibility is just uh, one over one minus beta j. So the susceptibility uh, diverges when uh, you approach this uh, this this point uh, as one over uh, sorry as 1 over uh, the distance uh, between uh, um, the is 1 over the distance uh, of the temperature uh, 
with respect to uh, the critical temperature. Okay. Actually, you can check uh, from that formula that uh, the susceptibility diverges also on the other side uh, in the same way. So this describes, uh, so this defines, so uh, uh, what is what uh, say one of the critical exponents. Um, that uh, characterize uh, the singular behavior that occurs uh, at this point. Okay, so the other um, another exponent that characterizes this, this behavior is the way in which uh, the magnetization goes to zero as you go to the critical point uh, from uh, from this side. And this you get uh, from uh, expanding this equation to uh, for m star small, when you are close to this uh, critical point and m star should be small, then, then this equation uh, for when, when h is equal to zero, when you set h equal to zero, then uh, this is uh, the hyperbolic tangent of beta j times m is essentially beta j times m star minus uh, um, a constant uh, which is uh, uh, a numerical constant which is the um, coefficient uh, of the power expansion of hyperbolic tangent uh, times uh, beta j m star cube plus higher of the terms. Uh. So you see that when m star is small, then uh, the so this tells you that uh, uh, m star essentially behaves as uh, uh, one minus beta j to the one half. Okay, because uh, um, here you can simplify a factor of m. Here you have one minus so uh, sorry beta j minus one. beta j minus 1 is equal to m squared, so m star, uh, m star goes as beta j to the minus 1 half. So this is called the beta exponent, and uh, in the mean field this is this model, it is equal to 1 half. Okay, so, um, so uh, you see this is uh, 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 the a very gen a complete picture uh, that, uh, of the behavior of this simplified model of a, of a magnet that you get uh, from, uh, um, uh, from statistical mechanics.